What's going on guys? Gunner here. Uh, welcome to the third video and, and really this intro to, to Predator uh, fly design. We're basically designing bucktail flies. We got a really simple bucktail deceiver, high and tight, absolutely killer, just in silhouette and action, tends to dart around and show its profile. We got our bulkhead, much rounder, tubular, fatter, wider head, uh, much swimmier just on the strip, also slower fall rate, a lot more hang time, and tends to swim really well if you just strip it, strip it, strip it. And what we're going to do, uh, down here in Brazil this year we've had really high water conditions, um, and the fish have been loving flies on the drop, getting deep and really a finesse kind of slow jig has been absolutely killer. So I've been running both of these flies uh, very successfully with a cone head on my leader. Uh, but something I want to show you guys is a bulkhead jig fly. Um, this has been absolutely dynamite down here. And what we're going to do is tie a bulkhead on a jig fly hook. This is the new A-Rex jig, uh, 60 degree bent on a size 2 watt, really great wire for this, um, nice thick predator wire, this is absolutely epic. Um, also having a 4 watt and a 6 watt, this is a large tungsten cone uh, for a good fast drop. And basically we're going to run the cone right about there. And what's really cool is that cone, you know, I think a lot of people think you need lead eyes uh, maybe to keel a jig hook, absolutely not. Basically when you tie here, any of the weight below this you know inline plane below my pinky is acting as keel weight so you have all this wire mass have this big heavy cone so this is going to write itself just like this with the cone head extremely efficiently got a nice shiny hot spot you can also do my hidden uh, flyman hidden cone head with a flyman mask over top of this which is really cool uh, but we're just going to keep it plain and simple coming in with 140 power thread from Vivas coming in with our two different sizes of bucktail. We got a nice short crinkly wavy fiber for our head. Keep it nice and dense. All that that curl is going to really create the illusion of bulk without having to overdress the fly, right? Extremely important to keep the nice the flies nice and light and breathable. And then we have this very long wispy light bucktail basically are using for the last two stacks so that we have all this length and elegant movement. It's a very long fiber supple bucktail. So it's really key that you find two different bucktails for this. Uh, just to create the right silhouettes, we clamp this down. And I forget, I don't know if I'm going to do four or if I'm going to do uh, five stacks of bucktail. Uh, but the first thing I'm going to do is kind of come in here, get a good thread base, obviously, and spin the thread. If you'd like to know about thread spinning, I think I've mentioned it in the previous two, so I'm going to omit it in this one. But I'll just say that. If you want to go check it out, watch the previous two. Clean out my bucktail, give that some good finger flicks, get all that uh, kind of unnecessary short fibers out of there. It's a few too many strands, I don't need that many. Keep this nice and light, long, wispy tail. Going to give that a short vertical cut here. You know, off my taped thumbs, I got bass thumb like crazy. Hit that with three wraps, fingernail right on top, pinch the sides, get a nice round, keep it all the way around your hook shank, you want a nice even distribution, and then clean up those ends and lock that in place. You have this absolutely perfect, elegant, straight back tail. I'm going to come in with Hedron's Polar Flash and Opal. All I'm going to do is give that just a little bit of taper, drape it around my thread, push it on one side, kink it off to the other, and it's going to veil the whole back side of that, all that bucktail. Absolutely perfect. Now from here on out, everything is going to be a bulkhead tie, exactly same as how we did our, our bulkhead deceiver. Gonna come in here, 
Cut off a few more bucktail fibers, take out all the short stuff. Uh, I got a little bit, a few too long fibers in here. Make sure my silhouette's nice and clean. I got about, you know, an inch and a half of fibers hanging out the back. I'm going to leave about a half inch up the front to create a bulkhead. Pin to that to the top, three wraps, thumb on top, pinch it, pinch it, pinch it. You can just pinch forever, pinch, pinch, pinch. All you're doing is, is putting pressure on that bucktail, which is going to try to even itself up. It's going to try to uh, basically become 100% even relative to your pressure. And then you can just use your cone head to flare that back. It's not perfect, but it works pretty well. A little tricky. So you just use your cone to push that back, get your thread in front of it, work that fiber back, kind of soften it up, and build a nice thread bump right in front of it. You don't ever want the thread to go up on top of the bucktail. You just want it to go up to the bucktail, basically creating a vertical wall that's going to push all that bucktail backwards. Just like so. That might be a little extreme, but we're pretty far back in the fly, so that's fine by me. And I'm just going to come in and feather those butts with my scissors. The whole, the whole key to a bulkhead is really not stressing about that. You really just feather it in. If it looks good, it looks good. You know, you don't got to worry about that. If you overdo it, you'll be sitting here trimming forever. It's absolutely impossible to get that to look perfect. Best thing to do is to make it all random, and by the end, it will look perfect just because you have so many random fibers. So I'm coming in with my short bucktail now. Flick this out, flick this out. Nice short fibers creating our first collar here. Just going to even that up a little bit. Spun my thread so I got a lot of, you know, consolidated all of my thread pressure. Pinch and pinch. Flare it out. Give that some extra wraps. Use my cone head. Shove all that back and catch it with my fingers. Bring your thread through on the bottom and then up. Bottom first, then up come in with our nice thread cone. Whenever you're doing a thread cone, the most important thing is that you build a perfect cone. You need a perfect cone so that your bucktail flares evenly. You don't want a weird cone. If you're kind of wrapping like this or like this, you're getting more thread on top or more thread on the bottom. Or if you're going, you know, angular, you get more thread on the side and you'll start to collapse that bucktail in a very awkward manner and it won't it won't all flare evenly and so you won't have that tubular perfect silhouette that is what we're going for right because that's forage recognition that's how that, that prey is going to identify this as a food source is by that silhouette you know they're sitting down there looking at the same forage every day they know exactly what they look like from a distance so now just kind of eyeball where this cone needs to be, right? That cone, if that cone was right there, it'd be absolutely perfect. So that's where I'm going to tie my bucktail in. Short, curly fibers. Oh man, I can't wait to fish these flies. Got one more day down here and this is going to be absolutely epic. Take out some of the long ones, as long as they're not too long, it doesn't matter. Keep that so we're at that nice, you know, third mark. You really want that at the third mark. Everything we've just done is all going to be your taper and movement and everything that makes that fly swim from this head hydraulic that we've been building. One, two, three. Three nice wraps. Thread right on top. Pinch the top. Pinch the sides. Flare that evenly. Give that some extra walks. Push that back. Look how epic that is. It's so good. It's so good. And I can't even hook my thumb because it's taped up like crazy. Hold all that back. Bring your thread under, underneath and build up that perfect cone right here at the end. You can obviously dress this with some 
you know, if you wanted hackle tails. And that's what we're going to get at at the end of this video. Is, and in the next video is how to freestyle over this platform. And both of these platforms, the deceiver and the bulkhead deceiver. Make sure that's perfect. That is perfect. That's absolutely perfect. Uh, come in. Feather this out. This is a killer musky jig. Are you kidding me? You fish this sucker in some skinny water. Wade fishing musky in northern Wisconsin. Oh my goodness. All you need is some bucktail and some flash, my dudes. That's all you need. So good. So much movement. Such a perfect silhouette. So I'll over trim that just a little bit, but I cannot help myself. You just feather it, feather it, hide your collar, protect your collar, feather it. I am going to hit that with some super glue just real quick. Bring my cone down and feather a thread bump right in front of that cone. Just wedge it right into my head there. And that's all she wrote. And that is your bulkhead jig on the 2 watt Arex 60 degree bent hook. Oh, it's so good. Fish that for every species on the planet. This thing is money. And let that dry out. So, that is really the th Three simple flies. We got three flies on two platforms, right? Three flies. We got uh, bucktail receivers, bulkheads, and a jig bulkhead. Weighted, weightless, multiple silhouettes. Absolutely killer. Um, thank you for watching. Something I want to mention real quick here at the end. One, I'm going to take this platform for video four, four, <laughs> four, and we're going to freestyle over it. And a lot of times I think when people, you know, post on social media something about freestyling fly, it often is, it comes across as, you know, I, I tied it off the cuff, meaning you kind of just made up the design on the spot. And that's not what I mean here. What we're going to do is we're going to take this platform, this bulkhead platform, which is one of my absolute favorite flies of all time, um, and we're going to keep the fly, the entirety of the fly is identical. The steps are identical. One, two, three, four. Straight type, bulkhead, bulkhead, bulkhead. Long fiber, long fiber, short, short. Everything that makes that fly a bulkhead is going to stay the same, but we're gonna layer in a snow runner tail. We're gonna layer in a snow runner wing. We're gonna put a hidden snow runner bulkhead at the front of the fly. You can do tab eyes, you can do peacock over the back, you can do hackle tails, you can do soft hackle peck fins for barring even. Right, you can do all of this stuff. You could do yarn for gills right in between the stacks. Between each stack, you could wrap Polish nail in there and create a flashy body. So you're taking this platform that's proven, the silhouettes intact, key profile, you know, recognition, prey recognition, predatory response. The hydraulics are the same. You're going to have that same movement. The high and tight flies are still going to jerk. The round bulky flies are still going to swim. They're still going to pause and hover and they're going to have really slow descents, right? You're keeping all the characteristics the same. But what you're going to do is you start feathering in these different materials so that the flies counter shaded, so that the fly has barks, so that the fly has eyes, right? You're trying to bring it out of the bare necessities, bucktail and flash, which I have a hundred and twenty percent confidence in these flies uh, fishing abilities, but you're gonna make it more realistic color-wise to the forge, basically. It's all you're doing. That's all you're doing. You're taking this absolutely picture-perfect platform and creating a fly that's simply more realistic or true to the forge. So it's like if you want to take this high and tight fly, which is white, that might be great for shad, but it's not that great for bluegill, right? Maybe you need to tie it in yellow with a green back and a short orange throat uh, and soft tackle barring or something, right? So you have the same fly. The fly is identical, but you just feather in different materials to create a more accurate true-to-forage color combo. So 
what we're going to do is just do a snow runner hidden bulkhead deceiver. We're basically just going to do tan over white for kind of like a sucker color. So you have these two platforms, weighted weightless. You have these two techniques, bucktail high and tight, bucktail round tubular with a bulkhead. And, and really, you can radiate that out to match any forge, and now you have the correct silhouette platform to build it on. So, thanks for watching this intro to Predator Fly Design. Uh, I hope these techniques and platforms really help you because these fish anywhere, worldwide, I promise you that these fish anywhere worldwide. Uh, it's so key. Um, and I just want to mention, all this is, is obviously Bob Popovic's technique. It's his bucktail technique, and bucktail is such an amazing material, and Popovic's really pioneered this stuff. It's absolutely killer anywhere on earth. So check it out. This is the basics. These are the materials, bucktail and flash boo, that you need to literally get into predator fly fishing. That's it. There's no mystery about it. There's no, you know, I don't have enough money. I can't afford this. There's too many materials and too many colors. Man, bucktail and flash boo, get three colors of bucktail and three colors of flash boo, and you can tie predator flies for any predator on the planet. I promise you that. So, thanks for watching, and let's jump back down and freestyle a fly for the fourth video, and we'll let you go.